Hi, I'm Paul Outlaw. I'm a writer-performer, and I'm here at LACMA at the exhibition, Not I, Throwing Voices, 1500 BCE to 2020 CE, which considers LACMA's collections using ventriloquism as a lens. LACMA commissioned five authors to write ventriloquist scripts for the accompanying publication for the show, titled Six Scripts for Not I. I am here in front of Edward Bieberman's painting Conspiracy to perform an excerpt from The Talking at Money by art historian Darby English. What follows enacts a passage from the 1955 trial of Emmett Till's murderers, Roy Bryant and J.W. Milam. Carolyn Bryant, Roy's spouse, testifies about the interaction with Till that resulted in the 14-year-old's abduction, torture, killing, and the sinking of his remains in the Tallahatchie River near Money, Mississippi. The courtroom proceeding brings a further brutality as defense attorneys render the testified events as justification for the bevy of harms to Till. They cast the lynching as the likeliest outcome of Till's and Bryant's exchange, arguing that Till's actions and those taken against him constituted one transaction. A young visitor to the Old South, Till brought the news that the color line had ceased to function as a reasonable and unfailing instrument of separation. For these most unwelcome tidings, he had to be destroyed. Emmett Till carried news of a near future that is the present now. In the nominally advanced year 2020, a hardening of difference everywhere along the political spectrum supplies an ideal backdrop for this drama of race, sex, and the pathological fear of combination, of crossing thresholds of difference. Till's life and death could have instigated a loosening of differences that altered established social forms and opened space for new ones. Instead, the one-transaction logic persists, and it will do for as long as the inevitability of difference and its implications, restrictions, and consequences continue to be assumed. So hardened, difference attacks curiosity and sympathy with equal force, precluding imaginative or actual involvement with the other substituting common sense for considered response. Most paradoxically, it shirks accountability to the primary not I, my paradigmatic you, your paradigmatic me, without which a self cannot form in the first place. Form and go on forming in relations with other selves. Mrs. Bryant, on Wednesday evening or Wednesday night, the 24th day of August, 1955, did anyone... Who was in the store with you that night? No one. You were alone in the store at the time? Yes. Was there anyone in the living quarters at the rear of the store? Yes. Who was back there? Mrs. Milam and her two children, and also our two children. Did any incident occur in that store on that evening 
which made an impression on you. Yes. And what time of the evening was that? About eight o'clock. Was that before or after dark? After dark. Mm, just tell the court what happened there at that time, please, ma'am. This nigger man came in the store, and he stopped there at the candy case. And in the store, where is the candy case located? At the front of the store. And on which side is it? It is on the left side as you go in. And that is the first counter there, is that right? Yes, sir. Now, is the store, with reference to that candy counter, is there anything back of the candy counter towards the wall of the store? No. Is there any place to walk there or anything of that sort? Yes, an aisle. When this Negro man came in the store, where were you in the store? I was farther back in the store, behind the counter. Where were you in the store when this man came I in? I was farther back behind the counter. Were you on the same side or on the other side? The same side. And when he came in, I believe you said he stopped in front of the candy counter. Is that right? Yes. And what did you do then? I walked up to the candy counter. And what transpired up there at the candy counter? I asked him what he wanted. And did he tell you? Yes. Do you know what it was he asked for? No. And did you get the merchandise for him? Yes, I got it and put it on top of the candy case. And what did you do then? I held out my hand for his money. Which hand did you hold out? My right hand. Will you show the court how you held your hand out? I held out my hand like this. Which hand was that? My right hand. And will you show the court how you did that? Like this. And did he give you the money? No. What did he do? He caught my hand. Will you show the court just how he grasped your hand? Like this. By what you have shown us, he held your hand by grasping all the fingers in the palm of his hand. Is that it? Yes. And was that a strong grip or a light grip that he had when he held your hand? A strong grip. And will you show the court what you did? Well, I just jerked it loose, like this. It was about that difficult to get loose, was it? Yes. And it was with that much difficulty that you got your hand loose? Yes. Just what did he say when he grabbed your hand? He said, How about a date, baby? When you freed yourself, what happened then? I turned around and started back to the back of the store. You did what? I turned to get to the back of the store. Did you do anything further then? Yes. He came on down that way and he caught me at the cash register. You say he caught you? Yes. How did he catch you? Well, he put his left hand on my waist and he put his other hand over on the other side. In other words, with his left arm around your back? Yes. And his left hand on your left hip? Yes. And he had his right hand on your right yes. hip? Yes. Did he say anything to you then at the time he grabbed you there by the cash register? Yes. What did he say? He said, What's the matter, baby? Can't you take it? He said, What's the matter, baby? Can't you take it? What's, What's the, the matter, matter baby? baby? Can't, Can't you, you take, take it? it? Yes. Did you then try to free yourself? Yes. Was it difficult? Did you succeed in freeing yourself? Yes. Did he say anything further to yes. you at that time? What did he say? He said, You needn't be afraid of me. And did he then use language that you don't use? Yes. Can you tell the court just what that word begins with, what letter it begins with? In other words, it is an unprintable word? Yes. Did he say anything after that one unprintable word? Yes. And what was that? Well, he said, well, 
with white women before. When you were able to free yourself from him, what did you do then? Then this other n came in the store and got him by the arm. And what happened then? And then he told him to come on and let's go. Did he leave the store willingly or unwillingly? Unwillingly. How did the other Negro get out of the store then? How did they leave? He had him by the arm and let him out. Were there any white men in the store at the time this occurred? No. Were there any other Negro men in the store at the time? No. Were there any other persons outside the store? Yes. Were they white men or colored men? Colored. Were there a number of them out there? How many of them were out there? Oh, about eight or nine. When he went out the door, did he say anything further after he'd made these obscene remarks? Yes. He turned around and said goodbye. Conspiracy, from the Latin, conspirare, literally to breathe together, to accord, harmonize, agree, combine or unite in a purpose, plot mischief together secretly.